So, you want to become an adventurer. So, you want to use magics in fun shit. So, you want to get with a group of friends over on Discord because social distancing and have an awesome adventure together with one person trying to kill you. Possibly more, depending on if you're an evil group or not. Well, my stunning adventurers, do I have the tutorial for you. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the chaos. My name is Live the Tech, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to D&D. That's right, I'm a huge nerd, and I can't... You do meme reviews right now because YouTube cock freaking content strike me. So instead, here we are. I'm going to teach you how to D&D instead. Now, for those of you not in the know, D&D is a tabletop role-playing game that is played with uh, with with other people. Okay, so if you don't know what D&D is, I'll actually get a full explanation later. Today, we're going to teach you guys how to jump into the character creation thing. If you've ever seen a D&D character sheet for 5e, you'll quickly note that holy hell, there's a lot of numbers on this. Don't worry, I will be walking you through and teaching you exactly how to fill out the sheet. Or at least how I like to fill it out. Anyways, now today we will be filling this out all online so you don't have to download anything else. But there might be a few things you might need, like the rules. I'm gonna stop talking like that for a bit. Alright, so to actually get the rules you'll need what's known as the player's handbook. Now I actually have my copy, I'll actually be using the D&D Beyond copy that I have. Now I know what you're thinking, but Vlad! The books cost money! It's okay, I got you. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to Google, you're gonna type in D&D basic rules click on this article here and you'll get a basic rules pdf completely free free the freeness there it is now granted it's not going to be the full list of rules in the player's handbook which means you'll be locked out of a couple of different classes that you just simply won't know how to use in a couple of different subclasses but if you just want to get just jump right into playing the game without actually having to spend money just to see if you like it well then bam free resource right there and here's the best part you can actually use D&D Beyond not sponsored by the way and you can actually create up to six characters for free using the basic rules and D&D Beyond will walk you through the process and if you're playing online with your friends you don't even need to buy dice it actually has a set of dice in D&D Beyond, but I would recommend getting your own dice and using those or like a dice roller app of some kind. I'm not sure if what's, what's out there, but I would definitely do that over using D&D Beyond's dice because D&D Beyond's dice seem to hate people. Seems like every time I try to roll for a check on D&D Beyond, I fail. So I just don't use D&D Beyond's dice anymore. <laughs> You'll also need a character sheet in order to fill out a character sheet. Probably should have mentioned that first and foremost. Where do you get the said character sheet? Just Google D&D 5e character sheet PDF and it'll be literally the first link. And boom, there it is. That's really teeny tiny, so I'm gonna blow it up just a little bit, just to make sure you guys can see it. Boom. And the best part is, if you're on a, if you're using Google Chrome, you can actually just edit the sheet right in Chrome. So you don't even need to download Adobe uh, Acrobat like I have. And you can save it to wherever you want on your computer. All right, so enough talking. Let's get to the character sheet and stuff. All right, so the first one is all your basic information. You know, I'll cover that here in a second. The second one, uh, has, uh, basically just, like, a general character description. You can add a picture, you can give a, like, a sh you have, like, a thing for, like, uh, alliances and organizations, like, you're, you can actually type out all the stuff for your character description, backstory, and this very last sheet, we're probably going to ignore, but it's a spell sheet. I will go through this because spells are a little bit more complicated and there's also additional rules in the dungeon master's guide about how to use spells which i will get into later but for now we're going to stick to filling out the very first sheet now here's the thing i tried hard to like go in with an open mind to try to think of what kind of character do i want to play so i'm going to think of a character from mainstream media and try to make them in DD. what character do i think would be interesting to play let's go super basic and say ragnar of lothbrook or something similar to that. Now, it does kind of seem like I'm just stealing an idea, but welcome to art in general. Everything is stolen. But what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to use like the character of Ragnar of Lothbrook and use him as like a stepping stone. But using that, we can kind of get like a decent starting point. So we're using the player's handbook and we're actually going to go through the step-by-step -step guide right here, which is actually a really good starting point. And the first thing is choose race, choose class, determine abilities. This is actually really good because it actually gives you a nice, like, kind of stepping stone. Now, when it comes to classes, well, not classes, races, there's a lot to choose from in the player's handbook. Well, not a lot, but a good, a, a good amount. So as you can see, we have dwarf, elf, halfling, human, dragonborn, gnome, half-elf, half-orc, tiefling. We're going to go with human just to keep it simple. Also because it'll be in the basic rules. Now, if you have access to the player's handbook, I would actually recommend reading the entire description of the race that you are playing. And also talk to the DM about if they're using their own custom world 
and see kind of like how that race is viewed in that world because everyone has their own unique style. For instance, in the campaign I'm trying to write, there's no such thing as Dragonborn at all. And for human, we have a couple of different options. We have human variants, and it'll tell you how to create a variant human. Again, if you're creating a variant human, talk to your DM. Any good DM will already be talking to you while you're making your character because that's called a session zero. But we're going to go with a very basic, which which has this ability score increase. Your ability scores will increase by one. So this is very, very straightforward. The handbook will actually walk you through step by step on how to build a character. So before we even start filling out all of our ability score increases, we're just going to put race and we will just say human because Ragnar of Lothbrook is human. So next up, choose class. Boom. Now there's a lot of classes in D&D. There's barbarian, bard, cleric, druid, fighter, monk, paladin, ranger, rogue, sorcerer, warlock, wizard, and there's also artificer. There's also a couple of unearthed arcana classes, but I'm not going to talk about them because no. So to keep with the theme, we're going to go into barbarian. Barbarian is probably one of the easiest classes you'll ever play aside from monk and possibly cleric or bard. I'm not sure. Pretty straightforward, but if you want to know what more about how barbars barbar, you just read this whole section. But without getting too far into it, we're going to say class is barbar for barbarian. And it wants to level, I tend to go LVL dot and one. Now there's also something you can do in the future called multi-classing, but that's more advanced and I will get into that later. You can see we're starting to get a basic framework of how to build this character. And now the next thing would be determine ability scores. And this is where things get a little dicey, figuratively and literally. There are multiple ways to actually build a character's ability scores. Well, assign ability scores. So what are your ability scores? Well, if we look at the character sheet, they're, come on, cooperate you son of a there are these six things right here on the side of the screen those ability scores are strength dexterity constitution intelligence wisdom and charisma strength is how hard you can punch things dexterity is like nimbleness agility movability constitution is how many times you can be punched intelligence is how much you know wisdom is uh, your creativity and charisma is uh, how good of a pickup artist you are. Charisma is actually the, like, emotional smart. So intelligence is book smart, wisdom is street smarts, charisma is... I'm poor at explaining this. Um, no knowledge, applied knowledge, emotional knowledge. There we go. But what values do we give these? Well, we will give them a value between 3 and 20. But you can't just put any value in there. That would be insane. The first and most balanced way to actually do this is to use what's called standard array. So you get six different numerical values and they are 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and eight. 10 being average. You don't, and I'll explain what being average means in the game. Anything above 10 being above average proficiency at that one particular thing. Anything below 10 is below average. The second way to do that would be point by. So you. As explained in the player's handbook, you get 27 points and you spend those points to actually increase or decrease your ability scores. And I believe they all start out at eight. Yeah, they all start out at eight. So you have zero points spent and you would spend points to increase whatever score you want from eight. And the last more common way involves dice. These dice specifically that you can't see because I'm cupping my hand. I'll just reach into my handy dandy mimic dice box for six sided dice. I have Trust me, I have four here. Four six-sided dice. You'll roll these guys and drop the lowest. You add them up and that's one ability score. So for instance, I will roll. I got three twos, so I'm just dropping one of the twos. And from that, I got a six and two other twos. So that would make a total of 10. And that's one ability score. Write that down and you will do that process until you have six different values. And then you will just assign them to whatever ability score you do. When you want your party to be overpowered here's what i recommend you do roll this little guy this is called a d8 it's an eight sided die you will roll it take the value rolled in this case would be seven and you will just add 10 to it so you're not going to get an ability score below 11 but it's also way more likely that you'll roll really high and get really insane ability scores. But if you want to be a part of a more balanced game, I would suggest sticking to standard array or point by. And we're going to stick to standard array. And I already know what you're going to say. Well, what ability scores do I assign where? Well, if we go open our player's handbook over to classes, there will be a section that you really want to pay attention to. Right here in every single class uh, description will be a quick build section. It'll actually tell you the quickest way to actually make a build. Duh. It's also a nice stepping stone. Now you don't have to follow this to a T, 
but it it's, it's pretty interesting. So for Barbarian, they recommend putting your highest ability score into Strength, and followed by Constitution. So the 15 and the 14 should be Strength and Constitution, respectively. And then they recommend choosing the Outlander background. Now, I am going to follow putting Strength and Const being my first two, but uh, there's an ability that... Unarmored Defense, yeah. But Barbarians get Unarmored Defense, which is 10 plus Dex plus Const. So I'm actually going to make Strength now, it doesn't matter if you put it in the big box or the little box, just make sure it's there. Strength will be my 15. Cost will be my 14. And X will be my 13. He's going to be really quick and really agile and be able to maneuver. He's going to hurt when he punches you, and he can take a few punches. And I'm going to leave the other slot blank, and I'll show you why later. Now, that leaves us with just three scores to left to assign. So we got 12, 10, and 8. Now our character is not going to be very charismatic because we're actually going to put the ability score of 12 right here into Wisdom. And that'll leave 10 for Charisma. And unfortunately, he's going to have below average intelligence at an 8. Even though Ragnar in the series was actually really smart, he was actually kind of a superhero character, so... Eh. But our character is going to be a little bit more human than the Ragnar character. Now, notice that we haven't used... We have not chosen our background yet. There's a pretty good reason why we haven't chosen our background. And we're probably not going to choose the background here. We might go with something else. Just to add a little bit of spice to the character. Now that we got our ability scores, it's time, my children. We have to go back to our race for a second, which would be human. Because our ability scores are going to change a little bit. Because every race and every class have their own set of traits. And over here in human traits, we see that the first trait on here gives us an ability score increase by one. Each ability score gets a plus one to it. Now to keep track, to make sure that we're doing all that, we're gonna go over here to features and traits over in the lower right hand corner of this character sheet. Just look it up on your character sheet. Every character sheet may be different. And I like to type in hu hu human traits, colon. Go score increase plus one all. So we're gonna take every ability score and just increase it by one. That makes our strength of 16, dex 14, constitution 15, intelligence nine, wisdom 13, and charisma 11. Now it'll also have a whole bunch of other things like age, alignment. I tend to ignore alignment entirely, but here's one thing we do want to pay attention to, speed, oh shit, speed and language. Now for speed, your basic walking speed is 30 feet. That's very important. So over here in roughly the middle of the page, just below the basic character information. You'll have a section for speed. You wanna put the speed in feet. This will actually be important later. Whenever you enter combat, you will actually use this to determine how far your character moves. And another thing is languages. You will already know common. Most races will know common. So down here over in other proficiencies and languages, which will be just under passive perception, which will be just under all this mess of shit. Make a section for languages capitalize it languages and you can probably immediately put common but over here it says we get one extra languages of our choice and it'll also tell us that humans typically learn languages of other people they deal with since we're a barbar i think it might be interesting that he knows orcish so orcish makes sense right like a barbar would definitely you know have talked to some orcs before we get too far ahead we need to freaking now that we've got our human traits we need to go to our barbar traits and do the same thing but we need to remember that we're specific that's not, that's Bard. Whoops, here we go, Far Bard. But specifically we'll need first level traits because we're only first level. Now right here is actually a great place to look because it tells us we get plus two proficiency bonus, rage, unarmored defense, two rages and plus two rage damage. The other stuff I'll explain later. Just know that we need to put all this into our character sheet somewhere. And we'll start with our proficiency bonus. All right, so right next to the strength column, strength box, we have proficiency bonus, we'll just put plus two. And remember that because it's vaguely important. And we also have rage and unarmored defense right over here. Now you guys can read rage on your own, but our unarmed, uh, unarmored defense is kind of an important thing to describe to you because it's going to determine another trait on the sheet. So we're going to make another section over here under human traits called barbar or barbarian rage and unarmored defense. And for our rage, fuck, rage mortal more modifiers to we'll also make a section called rage damage plus i don't know a number 
Plus two. And trust me, you want it on your character sheet so you'll remember it later unless you're using D&D Beyond, which makes the whole process way simpler. Okay, and below that table, we also have a section called class features. These are all your basic features. And one of those things is hit points. <laughs> This is very important. Okay, there's also a section called hit dice. This is how many hit points you'll recover on a short rest, basically. But right now, we're gonna figure out our hit points first, which I'm surprised that D&D Beyond doesn't just do that right away. Well, I don't know why the book is structured this way to where you're figuring out your hit dice before your actual hit points at first level, but it's 12 plus your constitution modifier. And now we've hit a brick wall because we have no idea what our constitution modifier is because I haven't explained modifiers. So modifiers will add either a positive increase or a negative in or a negative decrease to whatever you rolled on a d20. That sounds confusing. We'll go, go into depth about that when we get into later lessons, but you see these modifier, these modifiers, these values that we've entered over here for strength x, constant, yeah, our basic attributes. We're going to figure out what the modifiers for each of those are real quick. And I can explain it as simply as this. 10 is normal. So if you have basic knowledge of any particular skill, you wouldn't be proficient or bad at it at all. You would just be normal. So a 10 would be a plus zero. Anything above 10 will give you a positive modifier. But what should that value be? For every two points above 10, you'll get a plus one. So for strength, we have a 16. So that's six points above 10. So two, four, six. So our strength will be a plus three. A more complicated way of doing it is you take the value, subtract 10, which would give us six, divided by two, rounded, rounded down. So it would be just three. You round down when you get a half number. So following that logic, this would be a, this would be 14 minus 10 divided by two. Okay, so that'd just be a plus two. Here's where it gets interesting. 15 minus 10 divided by two, which would be two and a half. In cases of half numbers, you round down. So this would only be a plus two. And you just do that the whole way down. But notice that intelligence, uh, yeah, that's a problem, isn't it? This would actually be a zero still. However, if that was an eight, we would actually, it would actually go down. It would be a negative value. So every two points below 10 would be a minus one. So if this was a, an eight, it would actually be a plus zero. Well, a plus, a minus one, sorry. This one would be a plus one. And this one would be a zero. Now that we have that, we can actually figure out what our armor class is. Now, your armor class is actually determined by your equipment, which I'll actually discuss in another video because I notice I've been battling on for over 30 minutes. But we're going to get through basically this whole section real quick. All right, so hit points at first level will be 12 plus your constitution modifier. So over here, hit point maximum. So we'll take 12 plus constitution plus two. So that would make our hit point maximum 14. And since we just created this character, its current hit points will obviously be a 14. Temporary hit points, zero. That's a topic for another day. Now for our hit dice, which should be 1d12. And you'll put total one. I'll explain what that is. Just note that that's what we get according to the handbook. And you'll basically just do this for pretty much all of our class features. The next thing under that will be our proficiencies. And we're basically just going to take this stuff right here for armor, weapons, and tools, and we're going to plug them into this box. And I'm going to cheat and use copy paste. Roll V. There we go. We also have this section called saving throws and it says strength and constitution. There's a whole section dedicated to saving throws. Uh, again, I will explain what that means later. So over here we have a box specifically for saving throws. And you're just going to click the little circle next to the two that it's specified. And time for everyone's favorite math. So all of these that don't have the little, little box uh, bubble filled out. They're just gonna be whatever value is assigned over here on the left. So you can take the time and actually just fill those out real quick, or you can just leave them blank because you'll just refer over here when you need them. But to be a good person, I'm going to just do all this. Here's what's interesting. Now for the two that have been specified as part of your class proficiencies, you're going to add your proficiency bonus to the modifier and enter in the total value here. So for strength, it'll be three plus two, which is plus five. And for constitution, it'll be two plus two, which is plus four. Ta-da! Next up will be this whole section. And you get to choose two, but I like to save that for after we picked our background. And you get your choice of starting equipment. You either get a great ax or any martial weapon, two hand axes or any simple weapon, an explorer's pack, and four jallet lens. These ones are standard can't change them, but you choose A or B for these first two. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm 
And when I'm doing that, I'm actually gonna put it over here in equipment. Just to keep things simple, I'm gonna say great X two and X's explorers pack for X Java lens. I'm not even bother using proper punctuation. It's also worth noting that this explorers pack has a bunch of stuff in it, one of which being a backpack, a rope, and a bunch of other stuff. I will show you guys where to find that information a little bit later. But just note, it's more than just, you know, it's it's got stuff inside of it. I'm basically trying to speed through this. We're still just getting this the bones set up. Now, real quick, what we're going to do is we're going to go with the uh, things here. This is your attacks and spell casting. This is stuff that'll be done in battle. We have armor class. We have initiative, which is actually really simple to figure out. We have these skills, which we have still have to choose, and we still have our background. So I'm going to go ahead and figure out what our background is going to be. And then you will see why I haven't chosen the skills yet. If we flip our books over to page, I don't know, backgrounds. We have acolyte, charlatan, criminal, entertainer, folk hero, guild assassin, hermit, noble, outlander, sage, sailor, soldier, urchin. I am going to pick the soldier background. And notice we have more shit to fill out. Isn't this great? But right away, it has two set skills, athletics and intimidation. Now here's why I actually chose to actually choose my background before using choosing uh my uh skills from the barbarian class we get to choose two skills for between animal handling athletics intimidation nature perception and survival now if i would have chosen athletics i would have just been shit out of luck because over here we have athletics standard now if you're using D, &D beyond it'll actually alert you that hey you have some skills overlapping and you should pick another one but if you're filling it out by hand, starting with your background is actually way better. So over here where it says skill proficiencies, it'll say athletic and intimidation. Your skills will be over here in the skill section. And you want to just put a check mark behind athletics and intimidation. And again, it's just a step by step thing. Read through this, figure out what, what your background entails. You also get a couple of extra features. And basically, you're just going to take all this stuff here including your proficiencies. You get extra proficiencies, by the way. You get extra equipment and you're going to just transplant it from here to your character sheet in the corresponding spots. Pretty easy, right? I'm just gonna copy and paste and hope like hell it works. That looks like shit, but I'm keeping it. All right, so in our tool proficiencies, we do have two choices to make, one type of gaming set, one vehicle set. I encourage you to read that on your off time because and figure out which gaming set your character most likely will have and which vehicle they'll be proficient with. And there's one other thing over here in this section, it says we have 10 GP. It does not go over here. Instead, you'll have these little things on the side of this little section. And you want the one that says TP, well TP, GP, and you'll put 10 in there. You've got 10 gold pieces. Congratulations. We can remove that shit right now. And boom, that's all transplanted. Now we need to go back to our class and actually choose these two, two of these skills. Minus that, Athletics not being one of them. By the way, in D&D, &D, you can ride a dinosaur. So if you want to do animal handling and become a dinosaur riding adventurer, you can do that. Oh yeah, we also have proficiency and intimidation. So we probably shouldn't choose that. But I'm going to say nature and animal handling because a dinosaur riding Viking sounds awesome. That's literally how I choose those things, by the way. You can metagame. It's definitely allowed, but you know, just keep it fun. Now we got to go through here and figure all these out. Now, this is pretty much the same math as your saving throws. You look at the skill. If it doesn't have a check mark beside it, it'll just be whatever this stat right next to it is. So Acrobats will be Dex, Arcana will be Int, Charisma will be Charisma, and you just do that the whole way down. But for these ones that do have the box checked, it'll be that ability score plus your proficiency. So I'm going to fill that out real quick. Not all that shit's done. Oh shit, I almost forgot to put the uh, soldier background up here. There we go. Also notice I haven't chosen a name, alignment, or anything like that. That's because I haven't really gotten a general idea of what this character looks like, his aspirations or anything like that. I just kind of go with the flow and try to talk to the DM about, you know, what to put in those, where, what, what's my place in the world and what, and from there, uh, figure out what more about this character as I'm filling out the sheet. So we know we have a dinosaur riding Viking. All right, so we'll start from the top and work our way down. Armor class. This is actually determined usually by equipment. Notice I said usually determined by equipment. In your player's handbook, there is a section that I forgot where it is. Oh yeah, over here, chapter five, equipment. Uh, armor and shields. And it has a whole list describing what types of armor exist 
and how it determines your AC. And you have a section for light armor, which will pretty much tell you, you know, what, how to determine your AC. And you'll have medium and you'll have heavy armor. Now, note all the different sections in here. That is worth noting. And some classes do get armor right off the bat. So you won't have to pay any money for it. So GP might not be something to be concerned about right now. But notice how some armor requires a base number plus a certain modifier. And some actually have disadvantage on stealth rolls. That's something that you're going to have to keep in mind when you're actually purchasing armor. And also when you're filling out your character sheet. Because that stuff is very important. For instance, if I had some plate heavy armor, some heavy plate armor, it would be very expensive first off. It would have a base armor class of 18, so I wouldn't be able to get be better or worse. It requires me to have at least 15 strength, which my Viking character would definitely have. But if I try to sneak in and out of places, I'll have disadvantage on the roll. So it's actually more likely that I will fail the roll. These are things you need to keep in mind. And some armor like this half plate, yeah, it still has disadvantage, but notice that it goes by a base stat of 15 plus whatever dex is. So you'll add your dex modifier to that, but there's a maximum of two. So you can't get more than 17. Now, since we chose a barbarian, things are complicated. We actually have a skill, well, a trait called unarmored defense. While you are not wearing armor, so basically you can wear just regular old clothes, you get your AC is 10 plus your dex plus your constitution modifiers. So we have math to do, 10, plus two, plus two. So our AC is 14, which is really good starting out. This one right here is initiative. This is the easiest one to figure out. It's whatever your dex modifier is, so plus two. And the last thing we're gonna talk about in this section will be attacks and spell casting. I will make a video later on like name, name choice, uh, alignment, and all that other stuff, but we're just going to get all the basic information filled out because I've been here for almost an hour. This will be used in combat to figure out how much damage you whether or not you can hit your opponent and how much damage you do and what type of damage it is. So name will be great ax attack bonus. Now, this is where things get really confusing. It'll be in the equipment section under weapons. Attack bonus will depend on the type of weapon it is. In our case, it's a martial weapon. Now, the general rule of thumb is that if it has finesse, you can actually use your dexterity modifier instead of your strength. But as if it doesn't have finesse, then you just use your uh, strength modifier. And you, if you're proficient in it, you'll add your proficiency bonus. So since we are proficient in martial weapons, which a great axe is a martial weapon, we will take our strength plus our proficiency, which is plus five. Now for damage type, how do we figure out? It straight up tells you great axe is 1d12 slashing. Also worth noting, it is a heavy two-handed weapon which means we have to use both hands, which will come in handy later. You need to remember that, but remember 1d12 slashing because that's the damage we're going to roll if we actually get a successful hit. 1d12, and we'll do that for literally for our hand axes and our javelins. I do not have a character name, the alignment, player name, I uh, should probably put it in, Glad. Experience points zero, because we're new to this. So this is all the bare bones. Oh wait, I forgot proficiency. The last thing is perception. This is literally just your wisdom modifier, unless you have proficiency in perception, which we do not. So our passive wisdom will be 10 plus wisdom, which is 11. So now that we got this, pretty much the basic information filled out, the only things we have left to fill out are alignment and character name. Now picking out a character name, you can just go wild. But this is still where you need to talk to your DM to figure out what kind of names. Since we're using, since we're sticking with the Ragnar theme, we'll stick with Viking names. Fulrath. Uh, yeah, we'll just stick with that. Now for alignment and personality traits, these are kind of self-explanatory. I'll have you guys walk through them on your L, but it's, ba it's a basic description of your character's personality. Alignment being how good or how evil you are whether you follow the rules or you're more chaotic. These ones are kind of self-exclamatory. But if you need help, there are ways to figure that out in the player's handbook. Particularly if you have more questions, go to uh, chapter one, part four, describing your character. <clears throat> and it will literally walk you through the entire process. And even, even when you go to personality and background, it'll completely spell out the entire process for you from languages to your alignment 
to what personality traits, ideals, and stuff all are. I just don't have time to do it here. Give me a break. I'm coming up on a fucking hour. And this one is pretty straightforward. It's just the basic physical description of your character. And this we'll talk about later. Next time, I will actually describe what all these numbers are for, particularly these numbers over here. And then I will go through and explain con uh, combat, which is basically this cluster of crap right here. So if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, this will be a one and done video. Ta-da, I taught you how to fill out a character sheet. Definitely leave a like if the feeling takes you. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button, especially if you're new to the channel, uh, because this is not my normal content. And, but um, hey, if you guys like this, let me know in the comment section below. And if you're interested in gaming content, you're already going to get that. Let me know which games I should play. If you want to tell me in person, go ahead and check out the link in the description below to my Discord. And if you want to help support the channel, there will be a Patreon and a Coffee account for donations down below. Patreon for monthly, Coffee for one time. I've got a video of Library of Ruin to, to edit, but for now, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed it, feel free to show me some love down below by hitting the like button. And don't forget to check out the annotations for more videos. Now we'll see you in the next video.